So, in order to say what programming is to me, um, or what it's never about, I mean, I have to say like what it is to me. Like, what do I think programming is? And the best way to do that is to actually program, uh, like now. If I program something, uh, how, no matter how easy it may be, you guys can sort of get an idea of what it means to me, and then we can go on from there. So for the next uh, part, for the better half of the stream, I am pretty much going to be uh, programming. And hopefully you guys can see this. If I go to... Yes, you guys can see. And I've been thinking about what, what kind of things I could be doing uh, on the stream. Like what kind of programming uh, subjects I can tackle in a short amount of time. And it's kind of hard to actually do that. Uh, what I thought uh, about was making like a simple game or uh, doing something that many students uh, who you know, are people that might be watching this uh, in college uh, do something that they have prob that they probably have to go through in, in college or something similar, right? And first of all, I'm going to open up. I don't even know where I am. Let me first let me escape here. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to start creating a directory since for this stream. So I'm going to go stream and I'm going to see the into there. Um, and I guess I'm going to do a to do that text real quick. So this is what I want to do. I want to do something that can be considered, uh, let's say, an editor. That's actually really hard to do in a short amount of time, obviously. But a functionality of the editor is something called a spell checker. Right? Okay, so from this point on, I am programming something simple. I'm talking to myself pretty much. So you guys can get a feel of what programming might mean to me. Right? So I always ask myself, like, what is X? And then I start programming from there. And here you have the question, what is a spell checker? It's a system that checks for your spelling. Then you can ask, like, how does it do that? And the way it can do that is probably have a dictionary with all of the words of the English language, let's say. And whenever you type something in, a word, um, it'll check against, it'll check that word against the dictionary and it'll say, hey, it's not here in the dictionary, so you probably spelled it wrong. And that's it, right? Um, interestingly, uh, if I put on like my computer scientist hat here, a, a spell checker is really a general case of, uh, of a system that's just checking a given input, right? It'll check it against, uh, a set of, of words, right? And then it'll say if it belongs, like if it's a member or not. So essentially the spell checker becomes a searching operation. Because what the system is doing is like, okay, you gave, you gave me an input, let's say a word, you typed in a word on the keyboard, and I'm going to check against my bank of words or, you know, my system, my table of values. Um, again, computer science, right? My table of values. Um, and if there's a match, like if, if I'm searching and I find a match, then yes, you are a member of this table, which means in this case, um, you spelled the word correctly. Otherwise, you didn't spell the word correctly because I couldn't find it being a member of that table, right? So when I'm programming, I kind of, when I make the system, I kind of want to make that searching operation of whether it's not in the table pretty fast, right? And then we have, for those who are programmers kind of, or, you know, computer science in college know, that there's a complexity to, you know, the algorithms that you do for programming. So if I'm checking against a table of values um, and I do a search for it, uh, there are many ways I can do that, right? I can do a linear search, which is pretty much O of N in the worst case. What that basically means is that the worst case scenario, when I'm trying to find a word on a table, um, it's going to take uh, the entire set of inputs, in this case, the, ent the entire set of members on that table to be searched for and checked against in order to see if it's there or not, right? Um, depending on your data structure, you can probably do a binary search with like binary trees and that's sort of like O log of N, I think. 
uh, on the worst case, which is better. Um, but there is a data structure, um, again, computer scientist hat here, there is a data structure called the hash table, um, which is essentially made up of two parts, right? The, the first part is just the table to store, in this case for the spell tracker, uh, your words, right, your dictionary. Um, and that could be like a raw array of strings, right? And the second thing that you can do that the, that the hash table has is uh, what's called a hashing function. And what the hashing function does is it maps uh, the input, like a word uh, in the dictionary, to one of the indices of the array where it's going to be stored, right? So if you if I call this function hash and I pass in the word that might be in a dictionary, like a common word, hello, right? It'll take that data, hello, and it'll transform it into something that'll spit out uh, an index, uh, an index that is supposedly a part of something that can be indexed by the array, right? Um, and you can store it there. So when you're going to look up a word, let's say, I mean, backspace here. Um, hashing can also be used for searching, so I can do uh, farcical, farcical with two L's, so that's misspelled, right? Um, the hashing function will still spit out a number, right? But once it looks into the array with that number, if it doesn't have a string at all, or if it's not the string that you expected, then that means uh, you spelled the word wrong. So a hash table can immediately find out whether or not you have a word, um, which is fantastic. That's, that's exactly what I want. Um, so I can pretty much get started programming with that. So I take off my computer scientist hat there, and I could like sort of be like a software programmer, a software engineer, and like actually start programming. So I don't need to save this. This was pretty awful. Sorry, I don't have. Uh, any graphics application that's pretty good for this kind of stuff. Hmm. Did that say? Hopefully not. Okay. So, like, I need to create a main.c, right? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, should be enough. Okay. So, again, I kind of know. Uh, what the system of spell checking is, but if I'm a software engineer now and I want to make a spell checker happen, then I sort of need a few things that the computer scientist didn't care about, right? Uh, necessarily, like he pro I probably want uh, for my employer or whatever uh, a window with in which I can write or display words that the user is typing, um, and then I want to have like a highlighter that highlights the word that was wrong, that was spelled wrong, um, and then you have like a uh, a tangible thing out of that uh, spell checker, like kind of thinking that you did uh, earlier. So I'm going to have to worry about creating a window, uh, how to get uh, letters on the screen somehow, and grab input from the keyboard when the user is typing stuff and store that information and hash it. Like once he presses space, like that word taken and, and hash it, and then see if uh, it was spelled correctly or not. Um, and that should be about it. So let's get started. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm probably going to need... Alright. For those watching on YouTube, um, you should probably have on the video description, I'm probably making a video annotation where you can skip this programming part because I'm basically just answering the question like what programming is to me. Right, so what I'm doing here may or may not interest you, especially some people in the chat that are experts already. This might be kind of boring, um, so sorry about that. But it'll, I'll, I'll go back to my talk and my arguments uh, soon enough. If this takes too long, I can pause it, go back to the talk, and then finish off like during the Q and A or after the Q and A or something. Right? I just want you to spend some time with me uh, to see how I kind of think about stuff when I program, right? In the most straightforward way as possible with a simple pro problem <sighs> like this one. Speaking of which, I kind of need this program to be cross-platform if I'm going to share it with people, for example. So um, the classic, uh, I guess, kind of library that people use is SDL. If, I'm, if I want to be 
kind of low level here, relatively. Um, and it's accompanying image loader. No, I don't think I need that. Probably not. And that's pretty much it. So I'm adding the former parameter. All right. Blech. Still not completely used to these uh, wrist braces here. Hmm. And then I kind of need some other stuff, right? Um, to make this spell checker for the window and everything. I kind of need the dimensions of the window in terms of pixels, right? So I'm going to probably make it 1024, something that can be seen by people pretty well on my monitor. 576 I think is pretty good. Um, I'm doing this in C, which means I don't really have a way, like a Boolean data type. So I'm going to say, hey, this is going to be the same as U32. I'm going to need a true, which is fine. I'm going to need a false, which is zero. Not too bad. And then there are some things that I kind of want to be shorter, right? So I'm going to alias some data, computer data types here. Um, I think 64, I might use it. I am definitely going to use um, signed in 32. I'm going to alias that to something shorter and probably signed in 64. It's probably the most common thing I might use. All right. Seems okay to me. Again, must be very boring for some of the people in the chat um, that are already experts at this kind of stuff. Um, okay, I need to initialize this library that I'm using that will create these windows for me and I don't have to go to all the low level details, right? So I call this kind of magic function that will do that for me and I pass in what I want. I want you to create a window for me. Um, this is SDL2, by the way, for those interested. Um, okay, I need a window, which is what I was talking about. Window, win equals, and I have to create, call another magic function that'll make this window for me. Blah, so I really don't know what parameters it takes right now. I'm gonna have to probably do that later. I need a renderer to bind it to the window. That I remember. I need to pass in the window. Uh, zero and then I kind of want it to be hmm I kind of want a software fallback for now going old school and then I'm going to need the screen itself which is going to be a texture just a simple texture called screen Ugh. right blah whatever it is that I need to pass in there and then I kind of want to, if I'm doing software fallback, I might want to take charge of the pixels myself. Uh, if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to create a pointer. So I'm saying, huh, okay. I'm going to call it screen, screen pixels, right? And I'm going to cast it. Mm, I kind of want it to be the window to be black by default, so I can do this function called calloc. Um, and I just pass in some things here. Ah. Sure. Times. Sounds so good. Something I forgot, and I think I'm gonna have to take off the Casey cuffs as much as I love these wrist braces. Um, I kind of need to type faster. And I'm getting used to these. Every day I'm getting better at them. Um, hopefully next time. All right. I go to the beginning. I kind of need a cert here. Ugh. I could even make it myself. Okay. And I need to. I kind of need to make sure that the things that I'm letting SDO create for me actually get created, which is why I'm asserting them, because if they fail, they're going to return null. Good. Alright, so I have my window, my render, my screen, which is just a texture, and then the pixels that are going to that texture, I have them as well. I'm, I'm taking control of that, right? 
So screen pixels right there. Um, good. And I'm ready to like. Actually, like I can even delay this if I delay it for let's say three seconds, and I compile this and run it because I'm gonna need some libraries here. This should create a window for me already, right? So it's a lot of work that I didn't really have to do myself, and I have to like uh take care of these parameters here. Spell checker, and then I kind of need to specify where I want the window to be created. Again, SDL for some reason, I can say I don't I don't care where you place it, you do it. Oh boy. Okay. And then like the dimensions of the thing, I think I remember, and then zero, because I'm not gonna pass any flags. But here you can have like window full screen or something like that, right? I don't want that. Okay, render is fine. The, the texture, I almost don't remember how to deal with the texture. Um, so for that, I am going to go to the wiki. So you guys can see it here as well. Dun, dun, dun. API by category. Hmm, what was I looking for? For the texture, right? I think that's like accelerated rendering here. And I got I'm gonna search for create texture. There it is. So what do you take? You take the renderer, a format, an axis, and a width and a height. Oh geez. Okay. There's value in kind of making this stuff yourself instead of calling somebody else to do it for you. So I don't need a title for the texture, I just need to pass in the renderer. It says something about a format, which I think I remember, which means that like, what's, what's the format of the pixels, right? Because they can be of different components and stuff like that. So RGB 888, um, 8 bytes per component, red, green, and blue. Then the axis, I think I also remember. Streaming, because the, the, the texture is going to be updated frequently, because I'm only having a single texture. I'm not doing this. I'm not using the GPU per se in terms of like... Um, in other types of programming where you have multiple textures that live on, like, on the GPU and stuff like that. And I'm not doing any of that right now. I'm just handling the pixels myself. And what did I do? Okay. And then I'm kind of missing something. I need it to be the same dimensions of the screen. Window render. Screen is good. Screen pixels are good. The delay is good. I am ready to compile. I am ready to compile. This definitely takes longer than I kind of want it to. So once I have, I have something interesting on the screen, more or less, I'm going to probably stop there, continue the talk, and then after the talk, I will, you know, stay with the people in the chat and, and keep programming if they're interested. Either way, you're going to have, you're going to see the whole spell checker implementation. It is, you're going to see it on the video description of YouTube once this is up. Um, okay, so what are the things I need? to compile this, right? Because I have some dependencies. I'm depending on SDL, which is a library, right? So where am I on my notes right now? Am I yeah, I'm compiling right now. Okay. So the compiler for Windows is usually CL. And I got a passing a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to make what, what people call a batch file, which will compile uh, the code and run it for me. Pretty much here it is. The comment is going to be um, build process for spell checker prototype. I don't care about what you say. And then I need to call the compiler and I need to pass in some interesting things. I, I want I want debug information, which means that it's going to create uh, some symbolic information for me which will contain like function and variable names and stuff like that. So if I'm debugging, I can see the code and stuff like that when it's happening. Um, right? It's going to be on debug mode. These are just flags that I'm passing to the compiler. I kind of need to specify the include files for SDL because unfortunately um, I'm letting SDL create the windows for me and stuff like that and draw for me. 
um, backslash now. I'm gonna have to looking at the chat. Okay. Uh, two point zero point three. I think that's enough. Include. Okay. So I'm done with that, and I need to specify all my C files. I may just have one C file, but just in case. The star says everything. Hmm. Now I need to think about the linker. <sighs> I think when I do debug mode, it injects it injects the a C runtime library on the object file. So I might want to say I don't want uh, the msvcrt lib because that's kind of annoying. It'll it'll, it'll balk. The entry point for this program is going to be. Because Windows will either start with WinMain or with the classic main for those who know right, Windows programming. For that, I, I say I want the classic main because I don't have WinMain. Um, main CRT startup, I think it is. But no default with entry subsystem. Am I correct on that? Console. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. And then. Like the paths of where the libraries live, right? Okay, I hope I'm not getting slashes confused because, yeah, Microsoft. Hmm. I don't really remember. Um, I think it's devlib again. And then I say SDL2 2.0.3, which is the latest version of SDL2, I believe, um, by the way. And then lib, and then slash again, backlash, x64, because I'm compiling in 64 bit. Um, wow, this is extremely boring, unfortunately. And I need another lib path, maybe, maybe not. I think I do. I might actually use STL image. I'm not sure. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, definitely takes a while. Okay, so I have two library paths. Hmm. I couldn't chain those two things by the way. Like I couldn't do like slash lib path and then the both paths and chain them. I have to you know separate them like that. And then I actually say the ones that I care about, the libraries that I care about, right? This one I care about main, I think. And I care about image. Rah! And then looking at my notes. Hmm. I don't, I don't have it here, but I have to do the output. I, I kind of want to. I want to call it spellchecker.exe. <clears throat> Problem with this is that it's going to pollute my directory, so I'm going to create a build folder for that um, and then pop it. Pretty common. And I think that's it. Hopefully. Let's compile and see. Do I have it? Yep. So just run build and let's see what, what happens. Hmm. Previous definition of screen. What if? 11. No idea what's going on there. Here. Oh! Oh boy. <laughs> Screen height. No wonder it didn't autocomplete for me earlier. Okay. How about now? This is pretty common, right? Okay. Call lock. Too few arguments for call. Hmm. That's right. Why? Why? <sighs> okay. <sighs> um. What else? I can run build from here. Fatal error. Cannot open input file. Um, SDL2 underscore image dot lib. Hmm. You should have. You should have found that. So. Maybe I typed in the lib path wrong. Let me see. Dun, 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 dun. SDL2. Okay, I think maybe I need to specify image here. For some reason, image like that. Okay.
OK. And then build. You still can't find it. Well, that's fun. That seems to be the last thing that needs to be resolved. SDL2 image.lib. Hmm. Let me look at the lib paths here. Looks good to me. I guess I can look. I can I can I can go take a look at that. Um mm, like devlib, do I have? Yes I do. Right? And then you did it take me there for some reason? What's going on? Okay. Wow. Ah naming naming. It's 2.0.0, not 2.0.3. Fun. <sighs> okay. Um, I need to go back to my batch file, which I should probably just have open in the same window as Finn. I don't know what I'm doing. Build that back. Hello. Um, there we go. Good. Hopefully now it'll build and I can show you guys a window. Right, go back to work. Build. Uh -huh. Suspicious. It compiled. Okay, now I'm ready to run it. Um, yeah. If it's in data, huh? Hold your horses. I need. It didn't really even create a folder for me. Ah, I said, you know, push a directory, but it's not. It doesn't even exist, right? Interesting. You know, some people have said that it's kind of. It feels kind of hazy when you're programming, knowing that people are watching. I, I agree. This is like my first time doing this, and. Yeah. So. Okay. That might work. That should work. And I kind of want to remove some stuff. Um, I don't want. I don't want the IO. I don't even want the, the the executable. So just get rid of all of that for me. And then the same thing with the PDB. Better. Let's run build again. Hmm. And it can't open the source file because I have to go back to the directory. So like that. Yeah. Pretty much. That should be that should be enough. Let's run it. Seems to have worked. What if I want to run it? Um, I could probably run it right here after I'm done. So basically, go back to build and just run spell checker for me. If it worked, can't find a specified path. Right. not recognized. I do have to go into build and I don't have to go up a directory like that. Okay, this is what I was expecting. So it wants to run, but it can't find the runtime libraries, right? So I need to copy them, put them over there, right? Correct? So this is the last thing we're gonna have a window up. I'm probably gonna type in some stuff on the screen. Um, so you guys can actually see me program a little bit more instead of build setups which is an important part though um i think i have them somewhere already these libraries um in, in a simple place to look for animator right i think i have i don't have a data folder i don't have a build folder but i probably have I don't. 
Hmm, go back. Show me what's show me what's going on. Oh, I think I know what's going on. So why don't you copy? Um go to NASA, go to animator. I think you have a you don't have a data. But you probably have there you go. So I just want all of the DLLs. Hmm. Here. All of them. Aha. And let's run it. Three seconds and it should shut down. Perfect. There's our window. Let's run it again. Build. One, two, three. Ah. Beautiful. Let's continue programming. I should have done the setup before the stream. I think I'm going to cut that out of the YouTube video. Okay. Hmm. So, um, I'm going to say, I want the window to stay alive. Let me go back to the... Thank you. Okay. I want my window to stay alive until the user says that we're done. If I want to do that, there are different ways to do it. SDL already has a way to do this. Um, an event. And I kind of want to ask it, hey, go ahead and, and pull for anything that the user might be you know, pressing, controller or, or keyboard or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to pull that out for the things that I care about. There are different types of events. One of them is that the user try to close the window and if that's the case then we are through right done break out of this and close the window and then I only care about two specific user events so whenever the user presses a key down that's what I care about nothing else so I'm going to say you know if the type of event is not the user pressing down the key then just get out. Fair enough. And now I might care about the specific key that he pressed, which I'm going to save here. Mm. Mm. There's nothing impressive about memorizing or committing to memory the things from another library <laughs> to me. Okay, and then I'm going to start checking for the types of things that he pressed. For now I only care if he pressed escape. If the user pressed escape, then we're also done. Simple enough. And then I want to have the window display the texture with the updated pixels. So I'm going to do that as well. Here, here is the screen. Update the whole thing. Here are the pixels, and, up, and I want you to use the entirety of the pixels. I want you to go ahead and copy that uh, texture to the renderer. But before that, I need you to clear what's already you know present on the on the on the window. Clear it. This is actually a kind of a slow operation, but it'll do. Um, Copy the screen, the entire thing, the entire thing, right? The nulls are just me saying, I don't want you to copy a portion of the texture or a portion of the pixels. I want you to take the whole thing and just display it on the screen, right? Um, to actually display, display it, I have to present it. These are just magic functions that, you know, um, SDL does for me. So, hmm, I present the renderer. And I kind of want to delay things. For now, it doesn't matter. Um, it should just show a black window as opposed to last time where it didn't really show any color, right? Let me build and let's see how that how that looks. I it opened this for me, but I got some errors. Let me see warnings. Okay, on line seventy two. Well, I have to close the shell. Where's the shell? My goodness. My goodness. Okay. I don't even remember the line. And why are you still active? Thank you. 72. Um, I'm passing stuff that's probably incorrect. 
it would seem. So I will go back to the API. I will look for update texture, which should be at the very end, I think. Oh, the pitch. The last thing is the pitch. Um, what was the pitch? I think it's... Yeah, I know what the pitch is. It's obvious. Same thing as... Okay. It's just the entire width of the screen times the size of... You know, pixels. Let's try it again. Okay, three. Um, if I close the window, it'll close because I I'm taking care of that. If I press Escape, it goes away, right? Um, I'm wondering, though, what's hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Interesting. Okay. I want a black screen. Okay. Not too terrible. Call out should have already worked though. Either way, I'm gonna Yeah. Okay. I don't really need to do that, but it'll help for when I change formatting later. It's giving me some time to think about things. Okay. What if I want to show something on the screen already? Let's do that as we think about this. I'm going to do some uh, some per pixel processing since I'm doing this on the software side. Um, what do I need when I want to fill up a rectangle? I need a, a rectangle, which I haven't really defined. I need an X and a Y and a width and a height. And I need to call it something. There you go. Okay. There's my rectangle. And then I also want the color, right? And then I'm going to do. I need to pass in the, the pixels of the screen because I'm going to fill it up, right? Per pixel processing is not. Uh, as efficient as doing like if I have a software frame buffer which is just the screen pixels I copy blocks over instead of doing pixel per pixel but it's, it's just a fun thing to do that's why I'm going to do it and I'm just going to say you know iterate through the entire matrix of you know of the rect and I'm going to call this something more descriptive right if, if I'm looking at it as a matrix and I'm going to go through rows and columns, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Close this out. I should probably. Have it. Okay. And then all I'm going to do, I kind of need to make sure that the pixels exist. Right? There you go. And screen pixels, I can use. Array semantics here and say, hmm, I haven't done this in a while, but I, th uh, I believe it's row plus time, times the entire thing. Because this is a, I'm treating it as a matrix, but this is a one dimensional array, so I have to calculate the indices of the, ma of the matrix myself and stuff like that, right? So, plus column plus the x position, that's going to be equal to the pixel color. Looks good to me. That's it. I didn't I didn't really have to make a function for this. But I might use it. This is like a facility that I might use that I will use many times over. So there's that. Let's fill up a rectangle. Um square. On the far left um 
top left, and I want it to be 30 by 30, right? Okay. Um, depending on the format, the pixel color will, you know, it could be a, you know, pixel color is like an integer, and it has a total, it depends. In my case, it's RGB888, which means red, green, and blue, and each component is uh, 8 bytes, and I kind of have to know the ordering of that. Um, and this might change, which is why I created that format variable. So what I'm going to do is say the pixel color, I'm going to let SDL, unfortunately, again, due to time constraints, do this for me. I say, here's the format, and I want you to give me uh, a blue okay, square. That should be it. And then I call what I just created, which should be uh, the square, the pixel color, and the screen pixels. Okie dokie. Hmm. Let's give it a try. Okay. This is very problematic when it comes to not understanding why this screen I'm gonna have to since I Oh you're running Oh it's okay you're running even though I have a build error Microsoft. You just continue because the batch file after trying to build even though it failed is gonna call the executable that was previously created and that's why because of these errors, you haven't seen the updated black screen. You haven't seen absolutely anything. For me, creating the worst batch file in the world. That is why I was going crazy. That makes absolutely perfect sense. Which is why I will continue programming this. Oh, wow. That's depressing. Um, after the talk, I will continue making the talk. I will never make batch files again. And yeah, there's that. Wow. I'm like, wow. Very interesting. I need some water. I was building and running, but again, this is a, a new laptop, Windows. Um, I haven't used Windows for development since my early teen years. And it's been everything Linux. If you want to build something, you just use an ampersand operator like this. So I would say like a build, a bash script, and if it works, and if it works, then run, right? And if it works, run. Otherwise, stop. And I was having some syntax errors and stuff like that, so it didn't build. But my batch file in Windows would continue running anyway, right? Um, that that's that's depressing